seconds before a Ukrainian sniper kills. But this is no ordinary shot. The target is 3,800 meters away, or 2.3 miles, and it's claimed to be the longest successful sniper shot ever recorded. We've stopped the footage before the bullet reaches its target. And this is the weapon used, a Ukraine-made Volodor Obrio rifle, or Horizons Lord in English. It's from a family known as an Anti-Material Rifle, or AMR, first designed to target tanks in the First World War, moving to military equipment, structures and other hardware in the second, before being reinvented for modern warfare. And in the hands of a sniper, its success is down to its significantly larger cased ammunition. But why? What you need for long-range shooting is case capacity, so a lot of powder, but also a ideally a flat shooting high velocity projectile. So ideally the projectile will be smaller. So what you can do, and here's an example for a different application from the Second World War. This is from the German Panzerbuchse. I hope you can see that okay. It's a giant sort of, well, relatively giant, 50 caliber class cartridge case, but then the neck is very, very slim and a little rifle bullet is poking out the top, almost comedically wildcatted or necked down. Literally, the neck is brought down to fit the smaller bullet. So you get the high velocity generated by a large amount of propellant in a big old case, but you get the um, lower win uh, air resistance and more velocity out of the smaller bullet as well. And there's no technical innovation in the rifle itself. It's the ammunition choice and selection of, of accurate components and high standard of manufacture. So we have, this is the 14.5 millimeter for, for such um, beast, beastly machine guns as the uh, KPV, um, the Russian KPV. It's a giant machine gun cartridge. Partway between a 50 cal and a 20 millimeter cannon round. Very, very large case, so high case capacity, meaning lots of propellant. The bullet is uh, proportionately huge. You know, without scale, you wouldn't think you wouldn't necessarily know that wasn't a 50 cal or a 12.7 uh, Dushka round. But the whole thing is much bigger, as you can as you can see. Um, in fact, let me just put that next to a 12.7. So substantially wider case. It is not hugely longer, but it is a bit longer. It's the width, it's that case capacity that makes it more, much more powerful and a bigger, heavier bullet in the 14.5. What these guys have done is take a bullet more like this and insert it into this case. These have been apparently custom manufactured brass cases so they can do that cinching down of the neck. And then they've got very expensive um, 750 grain Hornady AMAX target rounds, bullets, I should say, and they're then hand loading the right sort of propellant in the right quantity, meticulously weighed out, of course, and then necking down the neck, as I say, uh, and crimping in that bullet just so, so you have these match rounds. And that makes the world of difference. And with the 14.5 cartridge case, with the 50 cal bullet, you get the, the best of, of all worlds, really. As well as clever adaptation of anti-material rifle ammunition, it's likely the Ukrainian sniper relied on a few other tricks to ensure his shot hit the mark, including overcoming weather and even the Earth's movement. You're looking at uh, the Coriolis effect, the, the rotation of the Earth, um, a ten, at least a 10-second flight time based on the video, meaning that, I, you know, I hate to say this about anyone with, with such skill and, and experience that, that I certainly don't have, but there's an enormous amount of luck just baked into this. For, for a first kill, for a first shot, first kill, we don't know how many shots were fired, but no one's running around like a headless chicken here. So it, it, we can assume that well, may, maybe a round has come in and they've gone, what on earth is that? But then they would hear the sound, presumably. We don't know what sort of suppressor might have been used. You cannot fully suppress, obviously, the noise of a, of a round like this. So we don't know the circumstances. We don't know the exact setup, but it's plausible that with a lot of skill and a lot of expensive kit and a fair bit of luck that you can actually achieve this kind of insane distance. They must have used, I think, some kind of a prism setup or a special scope or something to be able to push it well beyond the manufacturer's 
effective range for their own rifle. So how does a sniper maintain accuracy with the recoil generated by such a large weapon? A suppressor helps with recoil a bit. What you really need with a rifle like this usually is a great big tank style muzzle brake, a great big chambered device on the, on the front of the barrel and it's directing uh, muzzle gases to pull the rifle away from your shoulder as the cartridge is trying to push it into your shoulder. This doesn't have that. The bare muzzle of this thing is just, I think it's eight ports drilled um, and multiple points around the muzzle and a thread for threading on the suppressor. So I, I think you would, you would definitely want a giant suppressor on there to help with recoil, to help with flash. Um, and ideally you'd want a great big Barrett style break on there. So we don't, again, we don't know the setup of this particular rifle. So what are the Russians likely to be thinking now? 3.8K is, is just mind boggling. Um, I'd be certainly concerned about something like this on in the enemy's hands. Then again, these guys are facing, you know, POV drones coming out of nowhere, um, artillery shells, mortared, guided mortars, you know, um, drone spotted mortars, all sorts of threats on the battlefield that are more prevalent and just as much of a threat, if not more so, than this thing. This, this is another tool in the Ukrainian armed forces, or armed forces of Ukraine's toolbox. It's not, I would say, any sort of game changer, though. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.